I do think that anti-capitalist sentiment is inherently anti-vegan. A couple months ago I did a Q&A and one of the questions was about my political ideology and I was asked if I considered myself neoliberal and I said yeah I would consider myself neoliberal and then I kind of gave a little bit more detail expanded on that a bit in a follow-up Q&A because the, the comments on the first one people were kind of mad at me. It ranged from people confusing neoliberalism and libertarianism they're not the same thing to kind of like you're dead to me type comments for not opposing capitalism, even equating it to fascism, even saying that it was inconsistent with veganism. So I wanted to address it, the um, kind of extreme anti-capitalist sentiment and how that relates to veganism. Shouldn't be controversial. For those who don't know, neoliberal is like your typical left-leaning social progressive, but also being generally pro free market with few restrictions on a lot of industries like housing, but also very pro welfare state as libertarians would say. Neoliberals want a substantial safety net, often even supporting public options like healthcare, for instance, not all neoliberals do. Of course, there's going to be disagreement when the, the private options aren't serving the public. Conservatives often accuse neoliberals of being socialists because they accuse everyone of being socialists, <laughs> um, you know, advocating for higher taxation, welfare. But ultimately, the wealth in society that funds that welfare is generated by capitalist mechanisms. Same as the case in, you know, what people call European socialism, which isn't really socialism by definition. Still relies on profit motive, still has private ownership, even if a few select industries are publicly owned. Since socialism is commonly defined as like a transitional state to communism, communism being the goal, I'm going to talk about focus on communism here. So why are neoliberals generally pro-free market and anti-communism is the question I want to answer. Philosophy is essential when it comes to ethics, but you can't just like think really hard to figure out empirical facts, right? Like when it comes to economics and economic policies and which actually work in practice, which result in a functioning system that promotes a GDP that's conducive to human well-being. You can think up an ethical system in which it is wrong for one person to ever profit off the work of another person. You can call that exploitation, but in order to put that into practice, you have to just not care about the consequences at all. You would have to ignore all of the times communism has been tried and all of the times it has failed, which is every time, every single time it's been tried, it has failed. It has caused immeasurable suffering and death. I'm a consequentialist. I care about consequences in terms of suffering. Most people care more about having a job, helping their family, than they do about some abstract principle that says it's wrong for their bosses to make a profit off of their labor. And I care more about what people want than I do deciding what people want for them or, or what I think is better for them based on some sort of cosmic justice. Injustice in and of itself is not harm. It's only harm when the consequences of injustice actually harm people or sentient beings. And that harm can range from material harm, disease, lead in your water being shot, to immaterial harm like damaged self-esteem. There may be some level of inevitable harm there when we're talking about capitalism. I'm sure there is. But that only matters if there is an alternative that is better, that if the harm that capitalism causes is worse than some sort of evidence-based alternative. But there is no evidence-based alternative. Or there is one, but the, the evidence goes in the uh, opposite direction. Talking about ending capitalism because of the inevitable harms without some solution, without something that actually works better, is like talking about ending food because food on some level is inevitably harmful. True, but you know, may maybe dying is worse. <laughs> Regulated capitalism with a strong safety net is the best system we have based on the systems we actually have evidence on, which is to say probably quite a bit more welfare than we currently have in the US. It's unreasonable to advocate for hypothetical alternatives when they range from untested to repeated failures. Again, you can't just reason out the ideal economic system for humans or for a particular country without evidence in practice. That's not being rational. It's not being scientifically minded. It's being dogmatic. 
I've talked before about how not all use is abuse. The same goes for exploitation, which refers to unfair use. Some vegans say you can't be vegan unless you are socialist or, or communist, but there's nothing in the term or the definition that is anti-capitalist. So the argument is something like veganism means no exploitation, exploitation is capitalism, therefore veganism means no capitalism. Two very big problems with this. First, you have to accept the very specific Marxist definition of exploitation slash capitalism, which is essentially begging the question when you define anti-exploitation as requiring Marxism because you've defined capitalism as inherently exploitative. I don't see any reason to accept this definition, the, the Marxist definition of exploitation. I think it's much better defined as unfair use, and what exactly that means is a lot more complex. Is there sometimes or even often exploitation in capitalistic systems? Of course. There are unambiguous cases, like obvious cases of exploitation, like wage theft and broken contracts. The same with animal agriculture. No choice is given to the animal, obviously, and obviously it's impossible for there to be any sort of fair exchanged or any any sort of deal made. So yeah, pretty, pretty unambiguous exploitation. There's also a strong case to be made for exploitation in the breakdown of regulatory systems, like monopolies, but that doesn't mean we can't understand how to evaluate fair exchanges. Do we have a long way to go in creating a fairer market via regulation? Certainly, arguably we still struggle with monopolies, but that doesn't mean communism is the answer. Which brings me to the second problem. There is no evidence for a practicable alternative. The reason we can say animal agriculture is wrong is because we have well-established alternatives. We know humanity can survive on a plant-based diet. We can grow plants, we can grow only plants, we can feed the world's population, and we can do it without animal products. We just need a shift in the market, one product instead of another. If there were evidence that veganism had the same catastrophic consequences that communism does, like we couldn't grow plants without manure, or we didn't know how to make B12, then we couldn't say animal agriculture is wrong. We couldn't advocate for its abolition because we would have no viable alternative, unless or until like clean meat were a thing. Morality is a product of choice. When it comes to dietary habits and food production, we have a choice and we need to start making the right choice. When it comes to economics, the claim that we have a viable choice in communism just is not true. None of this means that we shouldn't research economic theory and, and try to find something better, just like in the hypothetical can't be vegan world, hopefully we would research how to make B12, how to farm without manure. What it does mean is that it's wrong to advocate for abolishing capitalism based on some hypothetical work and basically a leap of faith. I'm not the vegan police. I don't like to tell people they're not vegan or fake vegan or anything like that. That said, I do think that anti-capitalist sentiment is inherently anti-vegan, at least currently. If we also mean the human animal, when we talk about animals and the definition of veganism, and you know, clearly anti-capitalists do, otherwise human economics would be irrelevant, then cruelty to humans is not vegan. Trying to push an entire society into, at best, an unknown situation, putting countless livelihoods and lives at risk within that society based on personal ideological reasons, that's cruel. The desire to tear down, for no credible reason, any and all capitalistic systems without regard for the human suffering that has always inevitably resulted is cruel. I know the intent is not cruelty, and I'm not saying intent doesn't matter, it does when we're talking about, you know, someone's personal character, but look, when we're talking about animal agriculture, the intent isn't cruelty there either. The intent is to produce a product and to make money. It's the outcome which is harmful and the indifference to the outcome which is cruel. I don't think intent is any excuse in the face of overwhelming evidence of harm. and ideological blindness to that harm is no excuse. And going back to the second part of the definition of veganism, by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. So no part of veganism as a moral choice makes any sense outside of a standard economic model of supply and demand. Without capitalism, eating plant-based is just symbolic. You know, promoting 
um, personal consumer actions and boycotts and alternatives as morally meaningful makes no sense. The presumption of a capitalistic context, a capitalistic society, is part of the definition of veganism. A denial of capitalism or opting out of capitalism in principle, not only does this make vegan ethics irrelevant, it fails to do good in the most cogent way that veganism acts on the world by changing production. It's a failure to be vegan in any sense, from ethical principle to consequence. So again, I'm not going to call vegans who happen to be anti-capitalist not vegans, but the ideology of anti-capitalism seems inherently at odds with veganism, at least for now. I don't have any political ideology. I'm not, you know, fervently pro-capitalism. I'm not committed to that. I'm not even committed to neoliberal. It's just kind of the closest descriptor to what I currently believe in terms of politics. I think the only, the only um, kind of label I fervently defend for myself would be consequentialist, but I am definitely anti-anti-capitalism and communism. There is no evidence for it being anything other than a horrible, dangerous political theory when put into practice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully that explained things a little bit better in terms of my views and how that relates to veganism because that's the most important thing. How does everything relate to veganism, I guess? Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Support the channel if you want to. Patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. <laughs> Running out of air. Uh, I have an OnlyFans where I just talk about random stuff in my clothes. You know, say, same types of clothes that you see here. Um, I have an Amazon store page where I have affiliate links to some stuff that I like. I need to probably update that. I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff that I should add. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to think of. It's hard to think of things that I like. <laughs> Saying that out loud. No, it's not. What? <laughs> it really shouldn't be. Like, just put things that I like regularly use. And I buy everything, like everything on Amazon. So it's not like, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks again, and I will have a new video very soon. Did I say that in the last video that I found, like, my favorite Lush product ever? <gasps> no, camera, don't turn off. Polar Bear Plunge. Oh my god, it's a bubble bar. I wish it were Bath Mom, because I kind of like Bath Bombs better. I don't know, the bubbles just kind of get in the way. I just want the colorful water, you know. But it is, it's just minty. It's just really mild minty and it's lovely and it makes the water just this really like pretty kind of milky thing oh my god it's so lovely it does make a shit ton of bubbles for those of you who like bubbles and well you can't buy it now because it's seasonal and it's it's gone but i was able to get two of them and i've tried one and yeah i think it's like my favorite lush product now it is amazing i wish they had other products that were just mint they have some with mint but it's like fruity mint it's, no what no so yeah, I would love just a bath bomb, like a non-seasonal bath bomb. That's just that smell. <gasps> oh my God. I think it's much better defined as unfair use and what exactly that means is a lot more complex. Complex, complex. I'm just thinking of like a duplex made of cum. So why are neoliberals generally pro-free market and anti-communism? Communism. Communism. <laughs> There's the Southern. It's coming out. <laughs> Tiny baby. Demanded. I. We're cat ears. Like a long time ago. I guess I've just still uh, had them on. Okay.